Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. A really devastating day in the Valorant world yesterday as the community mourns the loss of Vitality's Twistin. This came as a shock to the entire community I believe yesterday and is so sad for so many reasons that we will get into. There is some good news on the day as well but yes, plenty to discuss. It all started here yesterday morning with uh, the, I mean just, just such a tragic uh, story and I, I'm sure this, this really hit the community hard and there were so many tributes paid to Twistin and there's lots of discussion on what Riot could do to honour him in the game itself and also for others, especially at Masters Tokyo, to honour the legacy that he leaves. But he's only 19 years of age, Twist, and it's just such a sad story. So, um, you know, I believe he was struggling with mental health previously. I think he's talked about that openly on his social media accounts as well. And um, unfortunately, it all culminated in what occurred just a couple of days ago now. So Vitality comes up with this um, you know, announcement yesterday morning. We're heartbroken to share that Twist has passed away last night. Deeply saddened by this devastating loss. I have first thoughts and prayers with his family and friends, of course, this difficult time. Really difficult day for vitality, for everyone involved and for the community at large. So rest in peace, Twister. This really hit the community massively and it, you know, it's just a reminder to make sure you're taking care of yourself and, and making sure you're checking up on those very much closest to you. And you know, lots of reaction from Salah, for example, from Vitality as well. And what's just so incredibly sad about this is that you know he's such an exciting player to watch play and was on stage not long ago, you know, full of energy, full of passion and full of potential as well. A really promising player at that. And just so young, right? I mean, it's, it really is just tragic. So, um, you know, many reactions from Leah Faria as well and others. And as Ethan says, check up on your loved ones, RIP Twistin, this from FNS as well. So yeah, just a really sad day for the community yesterday and started off in an absolutely shocking manner. And this is the 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 idea that the community has had. I believe Sleeky came up with this idea and is now pushing to make this work and I think others are pushing to make this work with certain charity like kind of fundraising foundations where it's possible for every shorty kill at the event in Masters Tokyo will have a $25 donation attached to it. Many pros have uh, kind of uh, said that they will go along with this and as Annette says for every shorty kill I get maybe in the uh, in the upcoming games tonight and tomorrow for the guard as it will continue I'll be donating $25 to a mental health charity and there was also this idea for many of the professionals that are playing or not playing at Masters Tokyo and as Marco says from M80 that from their side $100 donated for every shorty kill in Ascension Tokyo and Champions. So it's great to see this initiative right in terms of the legacy that Twist and leaves but yeah just a really sad day for the community yesterday. Speaking on a slightly more positive front though we've got to talk about Demon 1 because this was one of the major positive events of yesterday and we actually mentioned right this was uh, yesterday's video I talked about this tweet where they were looking for Demon 1 in their facility and I wasn't sure what the punchline of this was going to be. They eventually found him on the desktop background and I thought okay maybe that's the punchline but the other punchline possibility that I did mention was what if he's actually going to go to Tokyo and that's why they can't find him in the facility. Turns out that is the punchline they were going for and Demon 1 in Tokyo is official and he actually tweaked this out yesterday with him flying in to Tokyo. So this is massive news. I don't believe that something from Paper X as yet has made it. He might make it in time it's probably just straight up more challenging when you're you know a Russian player in general and getting the visa sorted whereas Demon 1 I think like um getting the visa to work wasn't really looking likely but he also didn't have a passport so he had to get his passport first then get the visa or whatever approved and then make it on time and as he says Tokyo here we come tweets this out of the airplane window and we can actually see Pasta Noodle 69 here comes up with all the analysis on it just does straight you know geo rain bolt on this looks at this image looks at the details and uh, confirms that indeed this does line up with the waterfront here in Tokyo with these certain sections so not a, it's not like you would be lying about this right but um, nonetheless that is the situation and indeed Demon 1 has now landed he actually gives these thoughts on exactly how this was possible and uh, this is just great news for Demon 1 himself but also for the team we know they're going to be at champions in a couple of months time anyway so that was going to be the only chance for Demon 1 to play in a proper competitive tournament environment with this team. We know that he improved the roster massively when he joined for BCJ. It was controversial at the time to drop BCJ, but I think many realized that Demon 1 was going to be a talented player for this roster. Turns out that's the case and has obviously massively turned around their success as a result. So great news for Evil Geniuses to see them at their full potential. He's there just about in time to start the tournament in a couple of days. And this is what he has to say on the matter. Straight up live, I installed OBS. Nice. 
Open my game, open my P PC, like, what's good everyone, welcome, welcome. Japan stream? Yep, I'm live from Japan right now. I'm playing from the hotel. Yes, I will be playing in Masters, guys. I will be playing in, in Masters. How did I get my passport? So, I was in Seattle less than 20 hours ago. I had a flight from Los Angeles to Seattle, and then I got my passport expedited. I had to wait there, like, for 10 hours in line in the Seattle, like, Washington thingy. And then I got it, and then... Right after I got my passport, I had a flight from Seattle to Tokyo. So I've been up for like 48 hours, guys. I'm super tired, but like I'm Stop. still streaming. Who was gonna be the replacement for you? Uh, EG Reform. You can play Master Tokyo? Yes, I have my passport, so yes, I can play. Last appointment for. Yeah. It was the last appointment for a passport. Guy, no, I'll, I dude, I'll, I'll, on the point, I was just yeah. like thinking, like, J Japan is gonna be so crazy. I just sat there and, like, listened to music for like the 11 hours I was there. Yeah, hey, see, 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 fishing. If you're in Japan, no, I can play, I can play. I will be playing in Masters, yes. I'll be playing with e Evil Geniuses against uh, Fut. Demon 1 was, I believe, before the season even began playing for Disguise. Toast Team was in on. I'm pretty sure he was trialing for DSG and then they played EG in a scrim and then EG kind of stole him away. I'm pretty sure that was the story from a few months ago. So pretty entertaining stuff. But let's dive into what's going on in the Tier 2 North American Challenger side. I actually decided to wear the uh, the jersey that G2 kindly sent me. Here you go. It's the G2 jersey. They kindly sent me a month or so ago for their final appearance in the VCT this season unfortunately for them but uh, yeah so they played the guard last night and Azelsis gives the update here 10-3 first map guard ahead just lost the attacking piston and quite shortly after this it was done and dusted right we got this tweet as well from Shazam throw 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 GG's to the guards and then this reply I thought was pretty funny and obviously Shazam's response to it as well but still G team I mean one of those I think there was that bind map that was just ridiculous to watch like both teams weren't playing optimal Valorant by any means but there were plenty of rounds from G2 that they could have won, didn't win, threw away, and, uh, well, that's their season done. So it's kind of remarkable how quickly G2 season went down the pan. They looked pretty competitive season one, or split one of the challenger sides. There was all this talk from Shazam that they were very competitive with the tier one teams, that they would mix it up with them were they to play them, and it looked like he wasn't telling a lie, right? Because they did well in split one, they went to the mid-season invitational, got second place to M80, looked very promising and then didn't win a series in split two completely fell off oxy i think is definitely still a bright spot for this team but yeah the entire roster wasn't working and look they had to play the guard last night it's going to be tough but fundamentally if you want to get through to ascension you've got to beat a team like the guard or a team like m80 at some point or maybe even a team like most moguls but uh, that wasn't the case with g2 they lost everything and now that's them done as dapper says what a way to end it all o2 versus the guard we are out of ascension qualification who knows what's going to happen in six months' time, but it's always a fun ride playing Valorant. So, uh, yes, obviously wishing the best for these guys. But as we've mentioned the other day with some of these other teams, will they decide to continue to fund this roster? What is the purpose of G2 maintaining these guys on the salary? Like, um, you know, does it... I mean, there's nothing to play for the next six months. So I do wonder if these teams will get dropped and then re-signed at some point. Big question for these organizations and players to answer. But, um, yeah, G2 were looking quite promising. I don't think they were ever really the favorite but there was a time where they looked like they could well be the second or third favorite team to make it through the playoffs get to the ascension qualification and give it a go but they've actually fallen quite significantly short in the ends as did phase on the other side of the bracket they lost to oxygen this was again pretty comfortable i wasn't massively again like a few months ago if you'd have told me that phase are losing to oxygen and i said what are you talking about but lately it's been a pretty much an expected result and this as well was like there's no way you can lose this of your phase i mean some great shots but still like like some of the trades and phase simply weren't there. So anyway, the results went as follows. 2-0 for the guard over G2. It was pretty ugly, actually. 13-8 to center, then 13-8 on binds. Plenty of chances here for G2. They tied the first half, but in the end, it just wasn't going to work for them. And then Oxygen take down phase 2-0 as well. This was a split and a Haven this time to 13-9, 13-8 on Haven to close out the series. Phase again, right? I mean, obviously their Counter-Strike team has been doing pretty well, but still isn't as good as they once were. And in Valorant, they really know nowhere near. I mean, thinking of some of these guys that were on Rise previously, the likes of Superman and how good that he was not long ago. 17 and 32 from him last night and Scuba and Verno. Like, I mean, Scuba's a seriously good player, right? And Redux joined this team quite recently and 
Williams had good success as well. So Oxygen survive, they continue on. Mitch, of course, formerly of Cloud9, still living in this tournament as well. Their run gets harder, but it's not impossible. They lost in the upper side to M80, a pretty competitive series. I think, well, map one was competitive. Map two, they blew them away. But today is where things get serious. Well, two more games. So M80 versus Moist Moguls. This determines the first team that will qualify through to the Ascension qualification tournament that's coming up in, you know, relatively shortly in the entire Americas. So this is what it's all come down to. All these matches for the last several weeks, this is the chance for both M80 to secure their spot and for Moist Moguls in a crazy upset if it was to happen to make it through. My feeling is M80 will edge this series 2-1, but um, honestly, who knows? I feel like they've got a little bit more experience and maybe clutch factor when it matters, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. And then after that, we've got the Guard versus Oxygen. This is to confirm the team in the losers' finals, and still, these two teams will have to win two more series. They'll have to win this one, and either of these teams will come in with a lot of confidence against the loser of this other finals match. So only two of these four can make it. My money is going to be on M80 and Moist Moguls, right, to make it regardless of the circumstances in the upper finals, but you never want to lose this match and have to find yourself in the position of needing to win the lower finals when that is just so difficult to accomplish. So very much intrigued to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.